Cumberland. We start our new frenzy highlight show with the new Chapman Field turf at Cumberland Valley. Looks fantastic as the Eagles host the Blue Streaks from Mannheim Township. Isaac signs with the touchdown pass there as Cumberland Valley goes in front. And then the Blue Streaks come back. Look at that. Quick pass out to the left side and Mannheim Township back in front in this one. But you know the home team is going to have a big night. There's signs again. Fakes it up the middle and he scores. That's a good game, goes all the way to the end. A tight one, Cumberland Valley, the winner, 31 to 27. Let's check out Redland and Northern York. We continue with another mid-pen matchup that involves a pair of York County schools. Redland takes a short trip to Dillsburg to face the Polar Bears of Northern York. And here we go. This one happening in Carroll Township in York County. There we go, we got a quick pass out to the left side for the Patriots, they make a man miss. And then it's a gang tackle for the home team in purple as they bring them down. All kinds of atmosphere out there tonight as it's the first night of high school football. Again, another completion out to the right side. As you see the final score flash up, Northern York starts to take control of this game and they like the ground game right up the middle as they'll take out the Patriots, your final score there is 45-6. Now Shippensburg and Cedar Cliff is the game of the week and we'll get to that one. It has been a wild night. Can't wait to hear from Andrew Callista as he explains all the different things happening in that one. Good win for Northern York. So the frenzy roster is stocked this season. It's, it's stocked this season. We got plenty of talent as Alex Cauley is along for the ride and that's just one of the many members of the team. Alex, what do you have for us tonight? Yeah, well, Todd, you know, Atlanta Peter Strasburg the past few seasons has been among the last team standing in the state. Now, the Pioneers kick off the new season by hosting Selenko as the Golden Mules hope to have the Golden Touch at LS. Now, here come the boys in blue down the hill after some trouble with the snap on a punt. Selenko has good field position to start their drive. Does not take long for the Golden Mules to feed Josiah Foran, who clips the edge but keeps on chugging. He is in 4-6, and Solanco goes up 7-0 early in the first. Pioneers responding quickly. They march right down the field. Trent Wagner goes to hand it off. There's nobody home, so he turns into a QB keeper. He bobs and weaves his way in for the score. Lampeter Strasburg tying it up at 7. The Pioneers' next touchdown strike went a little more according to design. Wagner with a dart to Dean Herr on the slant for a 35-yard pitch and catch for six more. Pioneers would extend their lead to 21-7, but don't count out the Mules. They never let it slip away. Pull off the 40-35 win. Let's keep the tempo going as your Catholic travels east to meet Lampeter or to eat uh, to meet Lancaster Catholic. End of the half, your Catholic lining up for the field goal. Crusaders bring the rush coming up with the block. Kellen Murphy tracks it down and he is heading the other way. Time winding down, but Murphy takes it 89 yards to the house. He's going to need a bit of a breather, which he'll get because, well, it's halftime now. Crusaders taking a 22 to nothing lead into the break, but the Irish find their stride in the second half. Levin McFadden fakes the handoff and he will take it in from eight yards out. Gutsy performance from McFadden, who was limping for most of the night. York Catholic able to close the gap, but Lancaster Catholic holds on for the 22 to 14 win. The Red Lions student section gets tropical for their home opener against Ephrata. The Lions defense starting off hot in the first quarter. Drop back by the mountain near Sam McCracken tries to find Evan Boyley, but near side is picked off by junior Elijah Morales, who picks it up the first or the turnover of the season. Red Line cheerleaders trying to help keep the momentum going, and it helps. Very next drive, Lions quarterback Christopher Price shows off his arm, airing it out, and the Price is right. Lands right in the bread basket for Garrett Coppersmith, who takes it to the house. Seven to nothing, Red Line to open the scoring. Fast track ahead to the second quarter. Effort a down by two touchdowns. McCracken faking the handoff, rolls to his right, throws a dart to Quinton Fouts, who breaks a few tackles and gets into the end zone. Effort of fans loving the touchdown. They're not going to like the final score, though, as the comeback falls short. Red Line goes on to win 24 to 21. Yeah, a really exciting night for us as we launch an expanded 30 minute version of the Frenzy Highlight Show and all the things you've come to expect from our crew, plus a little bit more because it's really crazy out there tonight. Our Frenzy Game of the Week, a District 5A playoff rematch 
between Shippensburg and Cedarcliff. The season delayed a little bit for these two with a late kickoff. Let's bring in Andrew Callista, and this has been a wild scene as we lose the camera. Yeah, Todd, talk about a crazy day for the Greyhounds of Shippensburg. It starts with a shelter in place order. Cedar Cliff, gracious, they push the game back. We don't kick till about eight o'clock. And I'm gonna give you a little preview of who won this game, because I got a team standing by and they are all jacked up for Greyhound. It was worth the wait, everyone. Here's how it went down. What a night for some high school football. Shippensburg out for revenge while the Colts' favorite letter on Pirate Night, it's the C as they look to send ship to the bloody depths. The kick time just before 8 p.m. First play pitch out to Trey Cater for ship. Nope, he's okie dokie, he goes deep. Irby Weller wide open, 51 yards. What a way to start. And that leads to Amari Kerr, one yard TD scamper. Ship up, seven nothing, pom poms up. Fans want some defense and they get it. It's Cater again. He could throw, he could catch, and he could run run as they say. 87 yards, that's a house call. Greyhounds are off the leash, feel the beat. They aren't done. Tucker Chamberlain on the money to Weller down the sidelines for a huge gain. They would then connect on a short score to make it 20 nothing. Colts need to find their gallop and they get it on this long drive. Call it a derby. Ethan Durrell over the middle to Nathan Lust. He scoots between defenders and we got ourselves a ball game after a field goal. It's 20 to 10 at the break in this one. Second half back and forth game. Ships Elijah Wilborn. He could break free for a gainer, but the Greyhounds look to add to their lead and the Colts come up big with a blocked field goal. We start the fourth quarter in this one. Weather situation, White Hat says clear the field. When White Hat said, hey, that was enough, we had a 30-minute lightning delay. It comes back. Trey Cater scores once again for Shippensburg, 28-10 the final. The Greyhounds start the year 1-0, and the whole team's here with me right now, Coach Faust. How does it feel to start that year with a W? It's a nice feeling, you know, and it's expected. It's what we expect to do, so we're happy with where we are. When I asked you earlier this week what you liked about your team, you said, I love my quarterback, I love my backs, I love my wide receiver, I love my offensive love line. They fight. Exa exactly. They all came to play. Tucker Chamberlain, you came to play tonight throwing dimes all over the place. Man, what was up with that connection to Irby Weller today? I mean, it's been since day one. We're going to keep it up all season long. Was there a revenge factor and motivational factor for you guys in this game? Uh, definitely, since Irby couldn't play last, uh, last year during the game because of injury, we knew coming in this game that we're going to have a lot of revenge, a lot of passes, a lot of touchdowns. That's what we wanted. He was open all over the place, had a, had a couple big catches in this one. Dude, what was going through your mind? It seems like they couldn't cover you all night long. Nothing really. I just kept running rounds and they kept passing it to me. Well, what, what was the favorite catch? The, the one to start the game or the, or the touchdown here to make it 20 nothing? Probably just the one to start game. It's a great way to come out and start our season against our rivals, really. All right, man. I'm, uh, that's awesome. Guys, how good does it feel to start this year 1-0 and and get back after what happened last year? Get loud, guys. Yeah. All right. It's the first time they've done this. Hey, Todd. It's a frenzy type of night. <laughs>